Okay. Are we going to turn that light on over there? It might be a little brighter. Hi there. See you, Bill. <laughs> hey, it's Suncast, and we are all here tonight. Deborah's yeah. with her grandchildren, so I'm filling in. Can everybody say hi? Hi. 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 <laughs> all right. Tonight's lesson, you can take it several ways. It's who do you think you are? <laughs> or okay. who do you think you are? <laughs> so you can take it any way you want. But the Bible tells us in Proverbs that as a man thinks, so is he. So it's very important what you think about yourself. And of course the Lord wants us to think the way he does. His ways are higher. And um, in Exodus, he told Moses to call him I Am. His name was I Am. And I looked that up, and I found this fascinating that I Am is to be, become, come to pass, exist, to arise, to abide, to be done, to finish. And isn't that what Jesus did? Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. finished the work on the cross. And I thought, just in the words, I am. And what are we saying to ourselves? Mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. And it's very important what you're saying. What you think is what's going to come out. Mm -hmm. So you can wake up, in the, and I wake up. And at my house, I'm the early bird, and I'm the chirper. So if you're a night owl, you don't want me around, but you don't ruffle my feathers in, in the least. I am going to chirp because I'm full of the joy of the Lord. And of course, by the end of the day, I may not be chirping so readily, but I wake up with the joy of the Lord, and I speak it out. So if you're coming in grumbling, you're not going out grumbling. Because I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm thinking happy thoughts, and I'm releasing them. So who you really are has nothing to do with how much you've accomplished, who you can become, your behavior, your strengths, your weaknesses, your past, your family background, or even your education. That is not your identity. Your identity is firmly anchored in Christ. And I had taught on hope a couple of years ago in the, the anchor if you can picture the anchor, uh -huh. the arms, the arms are buried in the sand. And if you can picture Jesus on the cross and that his arms are strong, mm -hmm. you may not be able to hang on, but he's got a grip on you. You are firmly anchored mm -hmm. in Christ's mm -hmm. accomplishment. You are anchored in his strength. You are anchored mm -hmm. in his performance. You are anchored in his victory. And this is what we have to tell ourselves and think on. We are anchored in Christ. Nothing can get us off. Nothing will release us from that grip. When he has a hold on you, there is nothing that can separate mm -hmm. you from that. Mm -hmm. Your beliefs can be, they can be powerful, whether they're good or whether they're bad. But let's make our beliefs what God says about us. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus asked Peter who he thought he wanted to know what Peter had to say on who Jesus was. And so in Matthew 16, got my little, let's see, Matthew 16, and we're going to look at verses 13 to 17. Let's see here. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ, the Anointed One, and that means to smear or rub with oil. You are the Christ. Peter knew who Jesus was. It was revealed to him. It's been revealed to us who we are. We are in Christ. We've been smeared. We've been rubbed with the oil. We've been anointed. That's who we are. So 
one of the things I was thinking, this lesson is the most different I've ever done. Um, those of you who have sat under mm -hmm. me before, I'll have seven or eight pages <laughs> scripted because that's how the Lord gives it to me because he knows how nervous I am. <laughs> and he knows that I'm not a talker. I just, you know, I'm just not a chatter. So I have to have all the words so I can remember what I need to say. Well, this lesson, God gave me the title a month ago. Who do you think I am? Who do you think you are? You know, and I'm like, okay, now where's the outline? <laughs> I kept waiting and waiting week after week. And then this week it was really getting, I'm biting the nails. And, <laughs> and I'm like, Father, we've got to get something together. And he said, the Holy Spirit is going to be there. I am going to speak through you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have all the words. Mm -hmm. Just allow me to flow out. And I, I just kept telling him, but God, that's not my gift. My <laughs> gift is a gift. <laughs> and he said he's the giver of the gift. <laughs> he's the giver oh. of the gift. Mm -hmm. And he will give it how he sees fit. <laughs> so he and I had a little tug of war. He, was, <laughs> he won. <laughs> So it's not scripted, as you can see. It's just one page tonight, wow. and I'm shocked. That's shocking. <laughs> yes, it's very shocking. So um, he wanted me to bring out about uh, the lineage of Saul and Jonathan. And the, you know, Michael told me how to say this, Mephibosheth. Uh -huh. Mephibosheth. So Saul is the grandfather. Jonathan is the son, and Mephibosheth is the grandson. And Saul was king, and Jonathan and David were best friends, and they made a covenant with one another. In 1 Samuel 18.3, it says, And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. And so let's turn to 2 Samuel 9. We're going to start with verse 1. Let's see. I got my post-its. <laughs> got it marked. Okay. 1 Samuel, I'm sorry, 2 Samuel 9, 1 through 9. Let's get in 2 Samuel because it reads different in 1 Samuel. Yeah, <laughs> so 2 Samuel 9, 1 through 9. So we know that John, Jonathan and David have, have cut a covenant. And now in uh, verse 1, David asked, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And now Saul and Jonathan have died. Mephibosheth is the only one left. So now there was a servant of Saul's household called Ziba. They called him to appear before David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba, your servant? He replied. The king asked, Is there no one still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, he is at the house of Machar, son of Emil, in Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Machar, son of Emil. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, your servant, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness. For the sake of your father, Jonathan, I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Now, isn't that a terrible thing to think about himself? Because he was crippled and he, uh, you know, he lived his life even though he was the grandson of a king, he had, didn't live as a king. And yet, David is honoring the covenant with Jonathan. And he says, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. So even though Mephibosheth thought of himself as a dead dog, David was having none of that. And he was the king. It was like... Jesus saying, I'm having none of that. 
you're not going to think about yourself that way. Yeah. You come sit at my table. You come sit with me just as you are. You are not a dead dog. Don't mm -hmm. think of yourself mm -hmm. in those terms. Yeah. And let's talk about Abraham. And we're going to go to Genesis 12, verse 1. And the Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. The promise that God made to Abraham can be found in Romans 4.13. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Mm -hmm. We are the heir of the world. Mm -hmm. The promise of Abraham is ours. That's who we are. That's who I am. That's who you are. In Christ, you are an heir of the world, of its goods, its endowments, its riches, its advantages, and its pleasures. We call forth favor. It's ours. It's ours because of what Jesus did. This is the promise that God made to Abraham and his seed, and it's your inheritance in Christ. And now we're going to speak a little bit about Elijah. So... Elijah was a prophet, and Ahab was the king of Israel, and he was married to Jezebel. I know you've heard of Jezebel. <laughs> well, she was killing off the Lord's prophets, and she wanted to kill Elijah too. She was after everybody. But the palace administrator, Obadiah, was hiding the prophets. He had 50 in one cave and 50 in another. Well, Elijah had been doing a wonderful, great ministry, and all of a sudden he gets afraid because Jezebel is out to kill him. So he decides to go out into the wilderness, and he's ready to give up and die. And how many times have we felt that when things have been going really well, and we hear something and it makes us afraid? We went, okay, God, that's it. I've done enough. Uh, you know, I've done enough. Take me home. It's time to go. So we're going to read 1 Kings 19, and he is out in the wilderness. He is ready to give up. We're going to look at verse 9. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Do you ever feel yeah. like you're the only one? Yeah. But we know that Obadiah has a hundred others hidden. God's got us hidden. There, we are not the only one. We are never the only one. But the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. He is always with us. Amen. Whether you're up here or you're down here, he's always with us. <laughs> In Lodabar. <laughs> In Lodabar. Lo, I am with you. Yes. <laughs> okay, and then Esther, when we think about her, she was an orphan brought up by her cousin Mordecai. And she was presented to the king and he wanted her in his harem, but God had a better idea. He didn't want her just in the harem. He wanted her to be queen, and she was a Jewess about to be offered into his harem, but God says, no, 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 I have better things for her, just as he says for us, I have better things for you. So let's turn to Esther 4. And we're going to look at verse 10. Okay. 
Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that he be put to death. She's afraid. Mordecai has asked her to go before the king to save the Jews. She hasn't been summoned in the last month. So she's afraid to go on her own. And in verse 12, when Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you were in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows? but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. And each one of us is royal, and we've been positioned, whether it's in your community, your neighborhood, your work, where you can be in the grocery store. God's positioned you. You're royal. And you were there for such a time as this. We don't know when we walk into the store what the Holy Spirit's going to bring out of us. But he has gifts inside of us that he will bring out of us at the right time for such a time as this. Okay. And then we're going to go with David. And that's in 1 Samuel 30. I'm a Bible studier, as you can tell. We're all over the place. <laughs> Uh, I've got a hundred zillion um, post-its. <laughs> I should have color-coded them. <laughs> okay, so uh, David is being chased by Saul. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines pressed hard after Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab and Malkishua. Let me see if I'm in the right one. What verse? Uh, that's not the one I want. We'll just go straight off the cuff then. Um, maybe it's second, Samuel. Doesn't matter. David has been out with his mighty men and they have been fighting. And they come back and find that their wives and their children have been taken off. They haven't, haven't been killed but they've been taken away. Yeah. And David's coming out of a, a victory. But when his men discover that the wives and the children and everybody are gone, they turn on David. And David encourages himself in the Lord. And this is something that we have for us to encourage ourselves in the Lord. I think this is what David spoke over himself when he was encouraging himself. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And these words bring comfort. They bring soothing. They build us back up. They remind us that I am is to be, to become, to come to pass, exist, to arise, which is what David needed in that time, to abide, to be done, to finish. It's when you've spoken the word of God, it cannot return void. It mm -hmm. cannot return void. Mm -hmm. It prospers where it's sent. Mm -hmm. We speak over one another, but so often we have to speak to ourselves on a daily basis. Amen. And uh, 
I was surprised about this because, like I said, I don't usually speak off the cuff. Mm -hmm. But the Lord had a different idea, and he reminded me when I was seven years old, I had watched The Wizard of Oz. Big mistake for me. I am one of the most sensitive people that should not watch anything that's going to scare me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was petrified of witches. I saw them everywhere. There was a border in my mom's bedroom. Witches, witches, witches. Oh, no. I saw shadows of witches everywhere I looked. I saw witches. Okay, so I had gone to bed and the sheet, I hadn't even watched the movie. It had been weeks. I've got the covers pulled over my head and I am just <laughs> petrified, Aww. scared to go to sleep. And the Lord is saying, I am with you. I am with you. I am right here. Now I'm seven. I wasn't rooted. I wasn't grounded. But I knew the Lord. I knew the Lord and he said, I am with you. I Don't be afraid. I'm with you. And so in the seven-year-old mind, I thought, okay, he's with me. i got to show him that I believe him. <laughs> and I pulled the sheet down. Let my head out. Yes, I was still afraid, but I wanted to show my father, I believe you. You said you're with me. I believe you. Well, we're rooted. We're grounded. We know the word of God. We know God. We know he loves us. So we have it even more powerful. Pull that sheet down and know that he is with you. Be brave is what I told myself. Be brave. Well, I'm brave because Christ is in me. Because it's not me. Amen. And in John, John understood it about who he was. Because he said, who, me? I'm the one who Jesus loves. Mm -hmm. John got it. He understood. Mm -hmm. But we say that to ourselves. Who, me? I'm the one that Jesus loves. And mm -hmm. we're God's favorite, each one of us. We are the favored one. We are his most mm -hmm. favorite. So our thinking becomes our knowing. So what you think on, what you meditate on, what you speak, that's what becomes real. So what we see, that's temporary. Mm -hmm. But he is not temporary. And I've got a, a handout for each one of us, if you'll pass that out. And I entitled it, I Am. But I, I think that we'll read out loud the first ten together. This, There are more I Ams in the Bible. These are just what I could fit on the sheet about who you are in Christ. And, and um, I've got notes for those of you that are at home. I put them on before I came. <laughs> so that if you want to get out your sheet, and uh, we're going to, let's see, we'll read down to I am sealed with the Holy Spirit. And I don't think we say enough that I am the one loved by Jesus. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. I don't think we think about it, but that's such an important thing. Mm -hmm. It is. I agree. It is. Such a, such a simple thing <coughs> right. to say. And John wasn't embarrassed about it. He right. leaned into Christ's Christ rest right. and said, I am the one Jesus yeah. loves. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Okay. I am the, the righteousness, righteousness of God, God in Jesus Christ. Christ. I am the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I am a child of God. I am a friend of Jesus. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. I am a new creature in Christ. I am justified and redeemed. I am free from the law of sin and death. I am a joint heir with Christ. I am joined to the Lord and am one spirit with Him. I am chosen, holy, and blameless before God. I am sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And these are just a few uh, I am's. And remember when you're saying I am, that means to be, to become, to come to pass, to exist, to arise, to abide, to be done, to finish. I am. And now I know who I am in Christ. Mm -hmm. So if someone asks you who you are, you just pull out this sheet. Yeah. You want to know who I am? Yeah. This is who I am. Amen. Mm -hmm.
And that's it, ladies. Oh, right off the cuff. <laughs>